Okay, so in the last video, we talked about the uh, problem-solving process by doing draw, sum, solve. Now we're going to start looking at individual forces and how we're going to apply that process to solve problems involving those types of forces. So in this video, we're going to look at what is known as normal force and weight. Okay, So when an object sits on a table, right, there must be a force that balances the force of gravity, which we call weight. Okay. And so object on table, right? The earth is trying to pull that object down, right? So if I'm looking at my can of soup here, the earth wants to pull it down towards the center of the earth. So there has to be something, especially if this can of soup is sitting on a table, acting in uh, the opposite direction of equal size, right? an equal or equal magnitude but opposite in the direction okay because if it doesn't that can of soup is going to go crashing through the table okay so the force that is that this contact force that is perpendicular to the surface we call that the normal force so this black force that i just drew over here that is our normal force that is our quote unquote balancing force for weight now sometimes it's going to be equal to the weight sometimes it'll be greater than sometimes it'll be less than that's all dependent on how many forces you have acting on the object but again follow the process of draw some solve then allow you to do that and one thing to note is that the word normal in math actually does mean perpendicular okay so we talked mentioned earlier we talked about weight okay so weight is the measure of the earth's gravitational pull on an object so you go to the doctor's office they tell you your weight basically that's how much earth is pulling on you at that point because it is based on height or you know you and not height but direction you know how far you're away from the center of the earth um and we can calculate it by simply saying fg equals mg okay which you could see this is an application of newton's second law right there's m and remember g is an acceleration okay and so i do want to point out this is very important that mass and weight are not the same thing. You can be weightless. So weightless is a possibility. But you can never be massless. Or massless cannot happen. Okay? So they like to do trick questions like that. They may say, hey, you go up to this place... You know, this is the amount of gravitational pull you feel. What's your mass? So they try to trick you and you say, okay, mass is just whatever the mass of the object is. And there's like a 80 kilogram astronaut on Mars. Mars has a G value of this. How much mass does that astronaut possess? They want you to go and try to calculate the weight, but they're asking you for the mass, right? And mass does not change. Your mass here on Earth is your mass on the moon, your mass on Jupiter, your mass on Alpha Centauri, Andromeda, and all those places, okay? What will be different is your weight, okay? So let's look at an example problem, all right? So we got a fire alarm going off. Um, we have a 97-kilogram firefighter sliding down the pole with a constant acceleration of 4.2 meters per second squared. What upward force is exerted by the pole on the firefighter, okay? So remember, draw sum solve okay so first up draw the free body diagram so we're looking at the the firefighters so we have the firefighters weight down we have this upward force now note the size of these two let me do it in a different color so note that the up force is less than fg why because we're accelerating downward, okay? So that up force is taking away some of the effect of gravity, but yet we're still accelerating down at 4.2 meters per second squared. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw 
my acceleration vector away from my free body diagram because if I draw it on my free body diagram, the AP is not, AP is not going to give me points. I'm going to draw it away from it more for my, um, more for my um, reference. And I'm going to say my positive direction. And you can put it whichever way you want. Um, I'm going to actually, I said down there, but I'm going to call my positive direction up. So we're not, so we're not confusing a lot of people right now. All right. So there's my draw step. Now I'm going to do my sum step. Again, I like to use a T-chart. You do whatever's comfortable for you. All right. In fact, I don't really need to do a T-chart because I'm not moving horizontally. So I'm only going to look at the Y direction. I'm going to say F net equals M times A in the Y direction. So what forces do I have acting? I have an up force. Right. So I have a force up. I have a weight down, and it's going to equal to m times a, right, in the y direction. I'm solving for it. So there's my sum step, right? And now I'm going to do my solve step by just simply now solving for f up. So f up equals m a y minus, sorry, yes, no, plus f g. Almost did my algebra wrong there. And so F up is going to be M times G plus A Y. Now remember F G is M G. So I factor out an M. And say F up equals 97 times 9.8 plus negative 4.2, right? Negative because our acceleration is down the pole. Okay. And I'm going to find that that upward force is 540 newtons. Okay, so if I were to go and quickly do, so say 540 up minus um, m times g, so 97 times 9.8. So 97 times 9.8 gives me 950.6. And it's going to tell me that my net force is going to be negative 410.6 newtons. And if I divide that by nine point or ninety-seven, because that's the mass of our firefighter, I get my acceleration negative four point two meters per second squared. So you see how this all works together. So what I did over here is kind of like checking all my work. Okay. Now in the next video, we're going to look at a phenomenon, something called apparent weight, which is a which happens in elevators, um, and that is a pretty fun thing to learn. Why do I feel lighter in some situations while in other situations I feel heavy?